Okay, I don't see any naked bodies, so that's good. That is a, that is a thing that is good. There's no there's no naked people here. Hold on, let me unmute these guys. Do we need an know. intervention for you? <laughs> no. <laughs> crack intervention, please. An I intervention. I still have. <laughs> Hi. Hello Hi. there. <laughs> All right, so uh, really quick, we're gonna we're gonna do something a little bit different before we get to the the last episode recap. Um, I wanted to go around the table and uh, have everybody uh, just do a short um, summary of the type of character they're playing. If uh, you know we have new people wandering in and they don't know have they don't have any idea what the fuck is going on, as typically people end up having to try to figure it out as we go in the stream or as they watch the vod. So uh, we're gonna start with you, Ship. Uh, what uh, what's your character? So, my character, she's a wood elf druid. I, I always want to say night elf. This is so hard for me. <laughs> uh, all right, like to, great. I like to dress in all black. Um, a fun fact about my character, um, I'm not very trusting of other people, but I seem to somehow get along with this group. I like right. bows, but I tend to just use spells. Like the conjuring of the giant spiders. Yes, that was OP as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and my Very favorite good. form is cat form. Great. Awesome. All Get right, along. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right, Ophala, tell us, tell us a little bit about you. Well, I'm a tiefling bard, and, <coughs> you know, my character's got a bit of sass to her, I guess. She doesn't do well with being insulted and people looking down on her she's and uh fun fact despite common myth she's not a whore <laughs> <laughs> a great so, uh, 10 out of 10 summary <laughs> all right flick, <laughs> all right flick tell us about you who are you i am a dragonborn paladin who follows the teachings of um bahamut which seems to be the polar opposite of the horrible dragon queen that we're fighting right now um, not very bright, but eternally optimistic. Great. All right, and Meowthy, tell us about you. I am a dwarven cleric. Uh, I follow teachings of whatever god will listen to me at the moment, but usually tend towards uh, the Raven Queen or other gods of the Death Domain. Uh, I'm pretty tall and real thin for a dwarf, and I just met up with everybody, and I'm so happy to be here. Excellent, excellent, excellent. All right, and uh, I am Dagonmar, the incredibly malevolent god of this world. <laughs> wow, that's, that's that, how humble of you. Wow. wow. <laughs> way, way to take the throne. <laughs> all right. Um, I'm going to actually bring you all... What the fuck was that? Weird. Um, I'm going to bring you all over to another screen, uh, just because I don't really have anything prepared right this second for um, what we're going to be doing here. All right, let me pull you guys over here. Do -do -do. Okay. All okay. right. So I need to roll for uh, our, our last episode recap. So oh, let's roll that. Remember, I was sick for half of it, though. You were, and Flick was gone. If you choose me, I'm just gonna make shit up. <laughs> Pokemon, gotta catch them all. Speaking of everything being broken and nothing working for me, my even though I had been charging my headset all night long, guess what battery is low? Uh, your vibrator. Yes. My vibrator. It's one of those remote controlled vibrators where um if you have uh if you if you're a tier three donator, if you're a tier three sub on my uh, channel you have the right, that's a sub all control right. it. <laughs> Hold on, and I just have to fucking find the there we go. Okay. Which cat is this? We're already oh, off to a stellar start, aren't we? Hey guys, say hi to Roxanne. Roxanne! Sorry. He's scared of that song. <laughs> All right. Um, actually, it did, in fact, land on uh, Shipwreck. 
And you were gone for the first segment of it, but really all it was was combat with the Yitter Caps and the Spiders. So you didn't really miss much of that session. So um, if you wouldn't mind giving us a recap from your character's perspective as to what happened last time. All right. So I was like kind of hanging out in the sidelines when this whole... Um, what is it? How do you pronounce the name again? I always mess it up. Uh, Edder Cap. The Edder Cap. Or they're in the giant spiders. Battle, and they were obstructing the path of our caravan. So I, I humbly hopped on in. I summoned some giant spiders to help out Ophala after she made them run away from her, including me. She also scared me away. So I summoned some giant spiders. We beat the Ender Caps. And then. One of the caravans was missing a horse. Is that correct, guys? Um, yes, yeah. The, one of the other caps stole yeah. uh, uh, actually Ophala's boss's horse. Oh, yes. Ophala's boss's horse was kidnapped. So we had to go find the ender cap in, I want to say, a cave. It definitely was a cave. And I feel like it took us a while to defeat this ender cap, but we finally <laughs> did. And we retrieved a horse, and that's all I remember. And uh, where was Flick during all this? Oh, um, you don't you don't have to answer Flick. They're going to answer for you. Apparently, <laughs> uh, thanks guys to, for the whole role playing part. <laughs> <laughs> according to um, Meowthy, he was around. Actually, he, he to was have seen him. No, I Meowthy claimed to have seen him. No, nope, don't recall that. Yep, Meowthy definitely nope, was. Nope, I don't recall that yep, at all. Yep, yep, nope. And what ended up happening when he got called out? This isn't going to be like one of those magic mic moments, <laughs> is it? No, all right. So here, I'll, I'll do the summary. So here, here's what happened. Um, uh, Meowthy sees Flick's boss, and, um, and uh, he says something about Flick, right? And um, what was it? It was, uh, you're, you're like, oh yeah, yeah, Flick is around here. He's, uh, he, I saw him over there. He was busy helping fight the monsters and stuff. And Flick's boss is just like, what? Really? And then uh, leads Meowthy over to a caravan, pulls up his sheet, and Flick is passed out under the sheet. <laughs> and it's like, yes, hard at work. And um, at first... Flick's uh, boss was upset because, like, wow, lazy dragonborn. Uh, but then uh, everyone started to get really concerned because, um, uh, it, like, two days pass and Flick hasn't woken up. He, he is he is out. He's okay. He he seems to be okay, but he is he is fast asleep and he will not wake up, not even to eat or anything. So, um, I believe that's everything from last session, unless you guys remember something I don't. Did all those hits to the head finally catch up with him or something? Or? <laughs> they made we'll me see. Cool girl. Oh, yeah, right. Oh, wow, we completely forgot about that last part. So, uh, uh, Ophala, what happened at the end? Oh, oh, yeah. I, I completely forgot about that. <laughs> Were we all just like missing from last session? <laughs> so. Did last session even happen? <laughs> it, it didn't happen, honestly. And then a cultist showed up. Yeah. I was under the influence <laughs> of cold medication. Mm -hmm. um, Fair enough. You were, weren't you? So there was a cultist who kind of recognized um, me as a father, and it was basically the one from the camp when we just a little bit before we ran into Flick. And she was threatening to expose me. So we had our wonderful dwarven friend seduce her and put her in oh, the middle yeah. of a clearing. And we, we tried to play nice. It was like, we don't we don't want to kill you. And and then like I impaled her in one in I one really her did. In fact, you 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 impaled her to the back of her skull and her eyeball was stuck to the end of your rapier. Holy shit, that's correctly. some power head. <laughs> oh my god yeah so uh she deaded and i think you all buried her right it was the least we could do right. <laughs> oh yeah that's yep. right it all makes sense now i remember this now we're fugitives technically 
Well, I mean, well, you've been trying to track these guys, right? And you're supposed to be stealthy about it. You know, if they, if they find out who you all are, they're probably going to not take this stuff wherever they're taking it, right? So that would be bad news for you guys, right? So yeah, it was, it was one of those things where that was a terrible thing to do, but it's probably the only way to go about doing it, right? So it's a very unfortunate situation, but uh, that is uh, what happened last time. Um, we have some really interesting stuff coming up today. So uh, we're going to start off with Flick. Flick, you uh, you find yourself in a completely white room. Uh, it's very very bright, and everything seems to be happening to you in slow motion. Um, you can't, oh god, I'm stuck at that final sequence in 2001. You can't uh, move your body at all, but you can move your eyes around. I've had, I've had this dream, thank you. Um, <laughs> and uh, in front of you is a floor-to-ceiling, uh, well, you think it goes to the ceiling, you can't really see up that high, uh, but a floor-to-ceiling mirror. And uh, in this mirror, you see your own reflection. Um, can you roll a perception check for me, please? <laughs> we both know the answer to this question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um... <laughs> <laughs> so you see a reflection. Um, and there's definitely something off about it, but you can't quite place it. Do I have um, my costume on? Do I have my fake mustache? You do not. You do not. Um, in fact, you don't recognize the clothes that you're wearing at all. Uh, but it is definitely your reflection. Uh, as I say, th the time seems to be moving by slower or something. It's like everything is in slow motion. And, and this seems to go on for a while. Um, and then you feel the hairs on the back of your, well, if, if you could have hairs, you feel a tingling up your spine, <laughs> I'll say, as you hear a rumble uh, in the distance and you jolt awake. Okay. Am I still and in a you've... creepy white room? Nope. You find yourself uh, uh, in a bumpy ride in the back of a, a wagon. And um, it seems to be light outside. Uh, and as you, you come to your senses, um, you imagine that you are probably back with the caravan. Okay. I'll, I'll peer out. What's it? Am I... Am, am I dressed or am I covered in my own puke or did, did no, I soil everything. myself? What? <laughs> no, you otherwise seem fine, although you have to pee really, really badly. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll, I'll see if uh, I'll see what's going on with the caravan. Maybe I can just let it hang out and uh, go while the traffic's continuing. Um, I don't know why I just got booted from the video call. Did you get booted from the video? Yeah, she got. I still she, see you. No, she she popped out for like ten yeah. to twenty seconds. What the? Fuck? Oh damn! <coughs> God damn it, Discord, get it together. Okay. okay. So, uh, where is everybody else right now? The caravan is moving, um, and you are approaching uh, the town of Daggerford. Uh, what are you all doing? You all just milling about your business. I'm poking Ophala in the eye. Can I roll to see if it hurts? <laughs> Why are you Whoa. doing this? Does this hurt? Does this hurt? <laughs> excuse roll me. initiative. No. Excuse, excuse me while I cast fear again. <laughs> this is hellish for rebuke means you stub your toe now, so. <laughs> Okay, everyone seems to be okay. So uh, <laughs> I'm feeding the gargoyle. Feeding the gargoyle. Nice. Yep. Um, like, uh, who are you looking for first? Uh, just anyone that's around, like my boss or one of these guys. Just whoever's around first. 
Okay, uh, any one of you might be nearby uh, in the caravan, but Flick's boss does see him, and uh, his eyes go wide, uh, seeing him actually, you know, walking about, <laughs> and uh, says, uh, are you feeling quite all right? I've really got to pee, but I don't think that's what you're asking. Well, you've been asleep for nearly three days straight. We were thinking you were going to die. Three days? Did did you try to wake me up? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, we absolutely did. Your friends did as well. And he points over into the general direction. Oh, I don't want to know what they tried to do, especially that <laughs> one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll, um... I guess I'll go try to find the others. All right. Um, he uh, he he reminds you that you still have a job to do, and uh, he he's glad that you're okay, but he expects you to be back to work today. <laughs> oh yes, absolutely. He's one of those hard ass bosses. Yeah. God damn it. All right. <laughs> At least y'all didn't fire you. <laughs> well, I didn't right. try to throw naked gnomes out the tents either. So. Okay. First all. It was a hobbit. <laughs> There's a big difference. Uh, they're all short and, you know, hairy, so... I guess? So, um... Who, who do you find first? Whoever's closest. So who's closest? Everybody speak up, come on. Everybody asleep <laughs> or what? <laughs> Okay, uh, Crystal, you're closest. <laughs> like is, everybody's everybody like, feeling, no. is everybody okay? <laughs> Just not, like I'm serious. Is everybody doing all right? Are we are we good today? I can't hear ship. She's got herself that's muted. The issue. Uh, oh, oh my god! I pressed spacebar, which mutes my Discord. This whole time, I thought you guys heard me. Okay, no. that's what was going on. All right, we're in a hot mess today. <laughs> Fantastic. But yes, Flick, I'm here. Hello. So I think something's going on because I had a weird dream with a mirror. Um, because of a dream? <laughs> well, apparently I've been asleep for a couple of days, and usually I don't do that. And, <laughs> and while I was out, I was in a room in it with a big mirror, and then something happened. And I think either we're close to where we need to be, or maybe we've been, something's about to happen. We need to keep on our toes. We either need to watch the caravan to make sure that they don't leave with the cultists, or uh, maybe some sort of attack is going to happen, but something, something is about to happen. And we should, we should let the others know. All right, so are we gonna stand guard right now? Well, yes, we, I kind of have to do that, too. All right, guys, wake up, Ophala. Wake up, Meowthy. I mean, I was already oh, awake. <laughs> Everett, the, the caravan is moving, just FYI. Yeah, it's I'm, on I'm, the road. I'm walking next to the uh, watch on my wagon, feeding my guard roll. I swear I wasn't sleeping on the job, I swear. <laughs> yes, that's my sleeping job. sleeping on the job or sleeping, Ophala? Wow. <laughs> Damn, that's mean. All right. So I will relay the, the relay this message to the others that it seems like something's about to happen and we should keep on our toes. Keep vigilant. Uh, okay. I'm walking around the caravan trying to see if I see anything because Flix got me worried. Right. Uh, so everything seems to be business as usual. Um, everybody's on their guard, but you guys are getting pretty close to this. Uh, uh, town of Daggerford, and so um, you know uh, the monsters don't typically get this close uh, to Daggerford without incurring the wrath of um, the town's guard. So um, you um, like everyone, you know, they're doing their job guarding, but no one seems to be like on edge or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And I relax. Yeah. So um, as the caravan rolls closer to uh, Daggerford, um, you see that it's a it's a walled town. Um, judging by the size, you say the population is approximately like 900 or so. Um, and there's a number of outlying hamlets and farms and estates, um, bringing the total population of the region to about 2,000. Um, 
The town is strategically placed along the tradeway and uh, fortified by a uh, what appears to be a dwarven built castle. Um, it's uh, it's like very rural, probably primarily a farming community. Um, its streets are like unpaved, uh, and the buildings are kind of ramshackle in appearance. Um, the the caravan stops here uh, for several hours for the day as um, everybody restocks up on supplies and uh, takes a rest. Um, several, uh, actually no, two people uh, join the caravan. Um, a gnome and a human. Um, and uh, nobody stays here in Daggerford, so it seems everybody is heading uh, up closer towards uh, Waterdeep, uh, including the cultists. Um, so while you guys were there for a few hours, um, was there anything that you wanted to get or do? I gotta pee. Yeah, oh my so god. You, you went and peed behind a building or something. Yes! Um, <laughs> <laughs> how about everybody else? Is there any shopping you wanted to do? Or I could like probably that? sell a few things. We got these gems. Oh, true. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll, go the, with, I'll go with Crystal. Okay. Um, there is a, uh, I guess you could call it a, a general store along the main road where the caravan is stopping through. Um, uh, it's, um, it doesn't seem to get, this, this town, even though it gets a lot of foot traffic, it doesn't seem to have a lot of wealth. Uh, the, the store does seem to be a little bit run down, but maybe you can uh, get a fair amount for those gems. Uh, you walk inside and there is a, a female human shopkeeper um, with uh, red hair, uh, shoulder length, and uh, her, her garb is kind of like ragged, <laughs> I guess you could say. But uh, she uh, dons a, a sterling smile whenever you uh, come into her shop and she says, Welcome, welcome. What can I do for you? I have 22 gemstones I would like to sell. She raises her eyebrows. Oh, okay. Uh, can I have a look at them, please? <laughs> yeah, sure. I hand them over with a smile. Okay. So let me see here. Um, she uh, she like takes out one of those little things, you know, that uh, that you would use to magnify uh, gems to find flaws in them, um, and she appraises them and she says. Mm, I can give you oh dear um i can i can i'll i'll buy half of them off of you for uh for five gold pieces each uh five gold pieces each mm -hmm. mm. i don't know i know they were worth close to ten Yes, dear, but I have to make a profit. I can't buy them to you for their list price. No, no, I get that, but five. Can we do? A she kind of she kind of looks around at like how run down everything is, and she <laughs> just kind of gives you this look, like really. <laughs> well, I mean, you sell these gems, you can make this place look a little spiffy. <laughs> spiffy. Yeah. Ten out of ten. Ten out of ten is well known. Um, she she says, mm. "See, the problem is I can't afford any more than that. Um, I could buy, let's say, eight of them off of you for six gold pieces each." Mm, I'll follow. What do you think? I think we should let her buy half of five. I know we lose okay. out a bit of profit, but if she can somehow you know, use it to make the star better, that'd be great. But I would also request maybe a discount on her wares. Hmm. Okay, so if we sell half an MTU, can we get a small discount on the store? Um, You can get a small discount on one item. Okay, that's fair. Okay. All right, so uh, you sell 11 of them for five gold pieces each. So you have 11 gemstones left, and you have added 55 gold pieces uh, 
your pockets. Um, and as far as like what she is selling, uh, you guys still have the um, the spreadsheet for mm. uh, shop prices. I I never got that. Oh God. May, do you have it? Okay. Sorry. No, it's okay. There. Let me try to bring it up. Also, does right. anyone in the caravan need chainmail armor? Or can I just sell that next time we go to a town? Whoever has Discord coming up over there, Mike, can you mute it, please? I believe that is uh, Flick. Okay. Bacon is feisty today. I like it. I'm not feisty. It's not a I, bad. I just, feisty is not a not a not a bad thing. See, I'm I, not I feisty. Just spent, what do you call him feisty? I just spent the past two days editing D and D <laughs> episodes, and so I'm a little bit. Um, I'm a little bit. You know, I'm trying to make sure that the quality of the stream and the VOD is going to be okay. That's all. He's being Wait, aware. So is eight <laughs> is like eight the number we have actually done? No, eight was a long time ago. Episode eight was like back in June when I got sick. Oh, okay. Um, uh, as about uh, the uh, the Discord beep came across whenever I sent that message, so I don't I don't know if it was from you or not, but um, what Discord oh, there beep? Is. Oh, I guess it was. If, if, if I hear it again, I'll I'll mention it again. But it's okay. But anyway, I sent you all the, the you. link. Yep. Um, and you are going to be buying things at um, mm -mm -mm, normal costs. Is it just general sell stuff that we're looking at? Mm hmm. Yep. Um. There. There's also um. She also has a couple healing potions. Literally a couple, too. I'll take them. Okay. Wait, can I use the discounts since I'm buying both of them? Yeah, you can use a discount. I'm not going to buy anything. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Okay, so normally they're 50 gold pieces each, but um, she'll sell them to you for 40 gold pieces each. Okay, and um, I'll buy a lamp as well. A lamp, okay. Uh, so that's another five silver pieces. Okay, so deduct uh 80 gold pieces five silver pieces and um add those items to your inventory if you don't mind anybody else getting anything no i'm good no okay. i am elsewhere all right okay where are you actually is there a temple in town <laughs> let's find out There is, yes, there is. There's a temple called the Harvest House. Uh, it's dedicated to the god uh, Shantia. Perfect. Um, there's a morning tower dedicated to Lathander. Mm. There's also a shrine to Tempest and a shrine to Timora. So, um, and if we expand these, um, Shantia is a uh, greater deity over agriculture. Uh, Lathander is uh, over like um, life and light, like dawn and renewal. Um, Tempest is uh, all about war, and uh, Timora is about like trickery and like uh, gamblers and game players and good fortune, that kind of thing. Uh, you said, was that last one Tamora? Mm-hmm, yep. I'm going to head straight over to that shrine. 
and uh, give a brief little prayer over the various body parts that I've collected over the last couple of uh, couple of days, and dedicate them to her. I'm going to dedicate all those uh, the people that we have slain so far to her, and then I'm going to go away from the town a little bit and bury them. Very good. Okay. All right. Um, and so with that, the uh, the caravan does start to pick up again. And um, it's on its last stretch now. I don't think that there's going to be any more stops until you get to Waterdeep. Um, Woo! Yes. So good times. Very good times. You're about seven days out from Waterdeep. Um, I need, let's see. I need for each of you to make an insight check. Insight? Yes. Oh boy. Oh, no shot for a follow. <laughs> I, I didn't get anything to do that for. Oh, come on. Maybe next week. <laughs> Maybe right. this week we'll break the. The, the chain of bad rolls that I've had. So, um, as the as the caravan is rolling on, you know, you guys are going about your guard duties. Uh, you notice that the gnome that joined the caravan back in Daggerford uh, seems to be uh, showing an interest in you guys, all four of you. Um, uh, she's spoken to several of you, mostly asking innocuous questions and commenting about the weather, like small talk kind of things. Um, but she leaves the impression of being someone who flawlessly takes in every detail about people and her surroundings. Um, Ophala and Flick, you guys are the only ones that notice this. Um, Meowthy and Crystal, you all are completely oblivious to anything. <laughs> That's normal. <laughs> um I'll I'll go to Alfala and Meowthy when there's a chance and get, try to warn them that she seems a little too interested in us specifically. So be on your guard. Um it, I, I already picked up on this. It's maybe we should warn Crystal. Oh, oh yeah, I forgot about her. And then I'll go over to <laughs> and tell her. Oh, hey, well, I remember. Meowthy, I have a present for you. Ooh, I like presents. I bought you this tiny lamb because you seem to struggle with sight. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Beautiful. I do I'll tell Crystal it. to be careful around the gnome. Mm hmm So, Crystal? Yo, hello? Hello. Uh, so how did he, so Flick has come up to you and warned you about the gnome. So how do you react to that? Can we just punt the gnome out of existence? I mean, we could, but <laughs> I found that they do not like that. <laughs> <laughs> he knows by experience. <laughs> well, bloody gnomes! Can we not just like distract her with something shiny and just lock her up in a cage? I I Actually, don't I don't think that's a good idea. Does she seem malev malevolent? No, it just seems she 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 seems to be taking too much of an interest in us. And since this is the last leg of the trip, uh, I don't know. Just be on your guard. I mean, I'm a, I'm kind of handsome for a dwarf. Maybe maybe she's just curious. Are Do you I'm trying to use know? use use the power of seduction against a gnome? No, we've already done it once. Are you sure she might be dwarf curious? <laughs> dwarf curious? I love that phrase. <laughs> oh my god. All right. So um, if you guys aren't going to approach her, if you're going to leave her alone and just kind of like watch her from a distance, uh, that's that's cool. Um, mm -hmm. Wait, all right. So several. Sorry. Have we seen her walking up to the cultist at all? Like, now that we're paying attention, um, do we see her interacting with them at all? No. Um, um, no, you do not. 
I'm going to walk up to her and introduce myself. Okay. Uh, how, how do you introduce yourself? She's like, hello there, I'm Meowthy. I noticed you just joined our caravan. Welcome. Uh, she looks you up and down and she says, uh, thank you. Uh, my name's Gemna. Gemna, that's a nice name. Uh, are you heading to Waterdeep as well, or? I guess that's the only as... the last destination here. <laughs> Indeed I am. Yep, the crown jewel of the north. Really? You know, I used to live near there, but I can't say that I've ever really visited the city. <laughs> she laughs at you and she says, I find that hard to believe. I, Everyone in the region has been to Waterdeep. Oh, uh, maybe when I was young. I've, I've been away from home for a while, but um, what, what are you hoping to do there? Just see the sights? She says, mm, yeah, I suppose you could say that. And she says, how about you? What are you planning to do when you get there? Uh, try to find a temple where I can get another position as an acolyte, I guess. Says, oh, are you a priest or a cleric? I... Yes, sort of. Yeah, I, I, I help out where I can. <laughs> she nods and says, "Interesting, interesting. I've not, I've not ever been much for religion myself." I lean in close and say, "To be honest, neither have I." <laughs> she kind of giggles, and uh, she doesn't really say anything beyond that. Uh, she starts doing some small talk, like commenting about how nice the weather is, but how she expects it to get colder as you get to water deep and that sort of thing. She seems to be uh, changing the, the subject. So, um, she like looks at you and she's like, oh, you're still here. <laughs> Damn, you got served. Did we no. lose him? Uh, I did say that there was a storm coming. He did. Uh, he warned us. Might have lost him. It's funny, his camera <clears> is <throat> it frozen or something. Uh oh, SpaghettiO. Oh, that's what happens uh, right before lightning strikes you in the face. It freezes <sighs> everything. Yes. <laughs> Do you right, know this from experience? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're gonna keep on going. We're gonna assume that you know he wrapped up that conversation. Yep, power's out. Um, I just got a text from him. Uh, okay, well, hopefully he can rejoin us. In the meantime, we'll just assume that Meowthy is uh, uh, off in the distance. All right, so um, several days go by without much of uh, any incidents. You're about four days away from Waterdeep, um, starting to get chilly. You're definitely in the north now. Um, you all are, uh, like I said, it's morning. Um, you all are sitting around having your breakfast together, as you usually do. Even though you're working for different employers, you guys typically do have your meals together. Um, and Gemna, uh, and she has introduced herself to others as Gemna Gleamsil uh, Gleamsilver. Um, Gemna approaches you guys um, as you're sitting down for your morning meal. And she kind of glances around, uh, making sure no one is watching, but she's especially glancing towards the direction of the cultists. After glancing around uh, to make sure none of the cultists are watching, uh, she puts her fingers to her, her lips, and uh, she takes the bowl of oatmeal that Ophala is about to eat. And... Um, so Ophala, after poking through your oatmeal... Uh, with the blade of her dagger, the gnome lifts it out and shows you an oatmeal smeared object resembling a tiny bead. She glances over her shoulder towards where the cultists sit at, uh, sit at for their breakfast, and she looks at you in, in a hushed tone. She whispers, um, it's a sliver of bone curled into a circle so you can swallow it in a mouthful of gruel without noticing. Once eaten, it slowly uncurls inside you, exposing needle points that pierce your guts and kill you slowly. I suspect they're in all your breakfast. Um, and she gets up and walks away, but before she walks away, she turns around and she adds, uh, let's talk this evening. And so the rest of you are left sitting around looking at the, the meal that you're about to dig into. Uh, how do you react? I just put it to one side. I'm just going to poke and eat it very carefully to make sure I don't eat 
<laughs> no way. Are you serious? <laughs> I just is that what, is that what you're doing? I'm just going to be really, really careful to miss all the seeds and stuff. Yeah. Okay, I need you to do two things for me. I need for you to make a perception check for me, please. Oh, this always ends well. <laughs> and before he dies. <laughs> hey, that's not bad for me. Okay, I need for you to make a constitution saving throw for me, please. Boom. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, what are the rest of you doing? I'm just throwing I my fork. I I'm just going to put mine to one side. In fact, no, I'm going to offer mine to Flick. Since he wants to eat. <laughs> well, I've been Does asleep he? for three days. I need, the <laughs> I need the extra food. Are you actually going to eat his too? The one that Jemna literally just pulled the sliver I'm going to be very of. careful about it. I'm hungry. Another perception roll and an, uh, another perception oh roll, please. <laughs> another constitution save for me, please. Okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. Um. So, um, a flick while you are eating those, you do find some things in there. Um, <laughs> you, they're like, uh, some small lumps. Um, they might be more bone slivers, but they could also just as easily be like oat husks or sawdust or insect eggs. Um, it's hard to tell. Just the usual um, in your meal, of course. Yeah, pretty much. It's, uh, it's, it's trail gruel. Um, so, uh, Ophala, while, uh, Flick is eating your oatmeal, you do notice that two of the cultists, uh, keep looking in your guys' direction, but they're, like, trying to hide their interests. So they're trying to be sneaky about it, but they kind of suck. Can't hire good help these days, apparently. Yeah, just, just ask my employer. <laughs> right. <laughs> Uh, hey guys, there's two cultists, like, keep looking in this direction. I think they're actually trying to see if we've eaten this. We should really up our guard and maybe prep our meals ourselves. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I'm not touching that. So you guys do have rations, I believe. Yep. Uh, or one of you at least has rations. Maybe you can share it. With the others? I, I think you warned us to buy rations ahead of time, so I think we stocked mm -hmm. up for at least a month each. Yeah. I so, have three um, rations. Yeah, so there there have been uh, like shared group meals provided by the caravan, but um, I suppose every once in a while uh, those rations will come in handy, like right now. So you do dig into the rations. Uh, each of you can subtract two rations. Uh, sorry, no, one ration uh, for the day. Um, your inventories. Let's see here. Uh, and uh, if anybody doesn't have a ration in their inventory, just let me know, and we'll have somebody detract. Uh, you know, subtract. I've it got from a lot of extra rations, so great. Alrighty. Um. So uh, that evening, um, the the caravan has set up camp, and most of the travelers have bedded down. Um. You all are sitting by the campfire, and Gleam Silver uh, comes over to you. Um, she says, uh, "Hello again." Hi. Um, interesting diet you've introduced us introduced us to. <laughs> uh, she kind of smiles and she sits down, um, and she looks at uh, each of you intently. And uh, in a hushed tone, she says, We don't work for the same people, but we're on the same side. Uh, we share a belief that the cult of the dragon must be stopped at all costs. Uh, I need to know what they're carrying in those wagons and uh, where they're taking it. Will you help me find out? We can do it tonight. 
Sounds like a plan. Do you have a plan, or are you just making this as you go? Um... She uh, she says that she has somewhat of a plan. Uh, it involves some sneaky sneaks at night while the cultists are asleep and uh, kind of getting past their guards. So we have to be stealthy. Mm-hmm. This food. <laughs> have you all actually... Um, has the highest uh, wisdom out of all of you? It might be Crystal. Um, yes. Yeah, uh, Crystal, it occurs to you that you've already seen what's in there. Their wagons. I think almost all of us has the... because of when uh, one of the horses fell over. We saw some of the gems fall out. Exactly. So um, it's up to you whether or not you want to tell Gemna this, Crystal, or want to remind the rest of the group of this. You could keep it to yourself if you want. Well, we know what they're carrying already, as I say in hushed tones, leaning into her. <laughs> They've got lots of gems, lots of gold. In fact, someone already died because they got the little two uh, star in the eye to looking at it. They got too greedy, or they looked like they were about to be greedy, but now they're dead. As for where they're going, we don't know. That's why we're on the thing here. Are you telling her this, or are you reminding the rest of the group? Uh, I'm just going to say it absentmindedly, probably because the bone spikes are finally <laughs> kicking in. <laughs> um and okay so gleam silver actually looks pretty relieved um she's actually she seems glad that she doesn't have to go sneaking around tonight um and uh she thanks you for the information and uh she says um where did all this treasure come from i don't know around they probably stole most of it and she says, do you know where it's going? North. <laughs> she kind of smiles slyly. And she says, mm-hmm. And uh, she kind of looks around. Um, and the human that joined the caravan with her back in Daggerford is over at the other end of the encampment. You can see him clearly through all the tents. And she kind of nods over uh, to the direction of that man. <clears throat> And uh, she says, do you know what he is? Um, a human? Looking for booty? <laughs> she laughs and she says, well, uh, he's been wearing um, a hat on his head this entire time, so I guess it wouldn't be totally obvious. But uh, if you took off that hat, you would see a, a bald head and a bunch of tattoos. And she whispers, um, he's a red wizard of Thay. And uh, she asks, you know, why would a red wizard of Thay be chumming it up with the cult dragon members? And um, she she points over that direction. You actually see that he is, in fact, talking to some of the members of the cult of the dragon. And so uh, just a little bit of backstory. Um, so in Forgotten Realms, uh, the red wizards of Thay are um, extremely powerful wizards um, they typically are evil as fuck. Uh, they kind of uh, do like magic just for the sake of power. Um, their leader is actually a lich. And um, they have like an entire nation to themselves that they basically took over with magic. Uh, they're like out towards the west, far away from here. Um, but wherever the red wizards of Thay show up, uh, nothing good usually follows. And you all just know this from living in this world and, uh, you know, hearing rumors and that sort of thing. And how do you know this? When did you sing about how? Um, back in Daggerford, when we were staying at the same inn. Um, now, you said we don't have the same boss, but who is your boss? Yeah, what's your play here? Um, <laughs> she kind of smirks and uh, she says, um, oh, you know, there's, uh, I, I work for, you know, this person and that person here and there. It's, uh, you know, I, 
uh you don't you don't need to concern yourself too much about it just just know that we're after the same thing here i think we need a little more explanation on that are you a mercenary uh she says oh yes all the time i do a lot of mercenary work are you an assassin (laughs) she laughs and says oh goodness no Are you part of some weird cult? <laughs> uh, she says, no, I don't really do religion. That's not really my style. She says, look, you don't need to be so cautious of me. I promise I'm not out to get you. In fact, I'm pretty sure I just saved your lives this morning. And then she looks at Flick and she says, well, except for you, you still be, seem to be alive. Uh, no thanks to <laughs> your own actions. Well, I was asleep <laughs> for three days. I was very hungry. And if... T- and if Bahabat needs me, he'll he'll take me. Mm-hmm. Um she she pauses and she says, um I'm working for a very powerful noble. Uh I'm working for a very powerful noble further north, uh, who is very concerned about the cult's activities uh, as of late. I swear to God, this better not be Elminster. I hate that fucker. <laughs> well, El- Elminster isn't he? He's like a wizard. He's not really a like a. Oh, uh, he's like every class. He's, he's, <laughs> he's just like if you need him to be something, he just he, he just was. <laughs> he's just point. that. Yeah, he's like the worst Gandalf ripoff I've ever seen. Hmm. Um. Let's see here. Uh, give me one second. So, like I said, all my stuff broke before the stream, and I spent like the past few hours trying to fix it. So I'm like having to do this by this by the seat of my pants here. So just give me one moment. Uh, talk amongst yourselves. Okay, but if you could one. mute yourself beforehand, because it might be distracting. Yep, my thinking is very loud. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 do we trust her, or do you think it's a trap, or what do you think it is, guys? I don't trust her. I think it's a trap. I mean, it, it's kind of convenient. It, it would be a very good way to gain someone's trust to plant something in their food beforehand and be like, oh, yeah, I totally saved your life. And, you know, I think it's a bit odd that she. Uh, Could instant- she be a red wi- Maybe a red wizard of Fae as well? And, like, one guy's going the more um, brute force method of becoming their friends, and she tries to see what the other people in the caravan knows. Literally, all she has to do is tell the cultists that we're here. If she wanted to screw up our world, she could do that very easily. I think we should see where it goes. Not trust her, but see if we can play her kind of thing if if we need to. Remind me, last time you tried to play another NPC, you ended up murdering the shit out of them after the dwarf tried to seduce them, right? Mistakes are made. You're not wrong. (laughs) Okay, okay, just 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 checking. So, uh, regardless, this is probably going to end up with a with a little corpse. What well, what I mean by play is maybe if we need to tap them for resources or something, we can use them. How? Information. See if we can slowly pump information out of her, kind of thing. See what they know. Yeah. So you thrust in the one. You want to pump the other. Oh, <laughs> I love you guys. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm ready to continue on. So, of course, during this conversation, Jamna has already, uh, you know, kind of wandered off. Um, she seemed to be happy getting the information that she got from you guys. Um, the uh, um, she, she, as you know, as the next couple of days go on. Um, she is still keeping a really close eye on the cultists, you've noticed. Uh, like, she's watching them like a hawk, but she's being very good about not being caught uh, doing so by them. Um, <clears throat> about two days out from uh, from Waterdeep, uh, two days after the last time you... Uh, uh, after this time that you spoke with Jamna around the, uh, around the campfire, um, the camp awakens to a killing... Um, one of the cultists that was acting as a wagon guard was murdered overnight. 
Um, he was actually uh, stabbed in the back. Um, and uh, he, he was left where he fell beneath the cult wagon. Um, hmm. The cultists are furious. And um, like as everyone is coming up out of their tents and uh, you know going about their mornings and they're realizing what's happened, there's you know word is spreading through the the camp. Um, the cultists seem uh, just furious and ready to place blame on just about anyone. And they see Ofala going about minding her own business. Um, and uh, one of the cultists says. Clearly, it was the tiefling. This is obviously the work of a tiefling. Why are you going to uh, be so racist? <laughs> and points the, points the finger at you and says, Look, our friend was punctured with a sword. What kind of weapon do you use, tiefling? I mean, I use a rapier, but so do many other people in the camp. And... um. She, they uh, they basically demand to see your rapier so they can see if it matches up with the wounds. I am not disarming myself in front of you people. <laughs> they kind of scoff and they say, what does that mean, you people? I don't well, know you people. Right hmm? They just turn that right around. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know you people. I don't work for you. I work for my employer. You don't. You don't give orders to someone like me. Um, they kind of look around, and uh, the the rest of the encampment seem to be uh, paying closer attention to what's happening. They're all coming over to see what all the commotion is about. And the same cultists that pointed their finger at you say, "I demand that this woman be arrested at once for the murder of our traveling companion." What was his name? Um, his name was, uh... You're taking your Janak. time with that. I mean, it's like, <laughs> there was those two poor bastards that ki got killed in the inn, and you guys... His name was Red Shirt. <laughs> I know, no, I know. Red Shirt 1 and Red Shirt 2. You did not care about them. And now Red Shirt 3 is dead, and it seems like suddenly you care. So, it seems an awful change in your behavior. Plus, I have an alibi, right, Shipwreck? Uh, Crystal? <laughs> Fala has been with me the whole night, so if she hasn't left, how could she have done it? Not like that. Don't get oh. your eyes. I start wiping my eyebrows. Damn! <laughs> <laughs> we got some interspecies shit going on? <laughs> oh my god. That'd be some gonna... serious hate fucking. <laughs> <laughs> Eventually you two are gonna make an elfling, so... Some very angry scissoring. Like Yes, it does. She has a tail. I think you need a the, the, dru the druid yells out, Scissor me, Timbers! <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, chat. I'm sorry. Alright. Oh, Actually, no, I'm not. <laughs> okay. Um, so, the, so the murmurs are spreading uh, throughout the, the caravan. And someone that you guys actually don't know, like you've seen them in the caravan, but you've never talked to this person. And he almost like starts laughing. He has like this smirk on his face and says, why in the world should we suspect her? You know, they, her and her companions have helped this caravan countless times at this point and looks at the cultists up and down and says, what have you done for us? And there's like uh, some more murmurs going through the caravans, like some people are nodding their heads like, yeah, like, you know, these people have helped us. You know, these the, the these these other standoffish people in the caravan haven't done jack shit, you know, um, I, I, I whisper to like, I like this guy. I know <laughs> he's probably going to be killed by the cultists in about three hours. <laughs> um. But uh, some of the some of the caravan's more prominent merchants, uh, including your bosses, um, say that you know what? Without witnesses, nothing can be done. So uh, the gods will punish the guilty party, and life will need to go on. And the cultists are, of course, furious uh, with um, this judgment passed down by the the rest of the caravan, and uh, they are looking at you guys, especially Ofala, with nothing but undisguised hatred and animosity. Is is the body available for inspection? 
It oh is. Oh my god. Well, it was. Like, yeah, we'll say that if you wanted to inspect it while this conversation was happening, you, you could you could do that. Can I tell what weapon it was killed by? Can I tell what kind of sword or like the size of the wound? Yes. Um, so do an investigation check for me, please. Okay. Okay. So, um, it is definitely was a piercing, probably most likely from a sword. Mm -hmm. Um, the, the wound seems to be quite a bit bigger than what a rapier would do though. Um, the, the gash seems to be wider than what you would expect to find with a rapier. Um, you also notice that there's footprints all around the wagon and around the body. Um, but, uh, upon further inspection, you realize that it was just people crowding around the body in the morning and, uh, you know, all the chaos after the body was found. Um, you don't see, you know, any tracks that could have been from, uh, a perpetrator. All right. Um, I go back to Ophala and tell her, hey, we really need to calm everybody down because we can't follow them if they end up getting lynched out here. I mean, what do you want me to do? Just, like, leave the encampment? No, but, I mean, maybe we could find someone else. Well, I mean, we could actually find out who did this. I mean, we can try, but we don't really have anything to go on. Well, we... <laughs> We know that uh, I, I, I took a look at the body, and I can tell that the size of the gash is a lot bigger than yours would be. Yours is bigger than... <laughs> Never mind. You're, you're just not big <laughs> enough I, I, for I was... this corpse. <laughs> I had similar your, fault stake. Your, your, gash, <laughs> your gash is much smaller than this, all right? I mean... No, I'm, I'm, just, so, I'm, 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 I'm not going to okay. make a joke. We can tell them that, and we could tell them, hey, you need to look elsewhere, and then maybe they'll go somewhere else, and they won't be so, you know, horror. We have to cause a whole bunch of strife within the camp. I mean, yeah, you can do that if you want. Oh, me? Uh, I was going to yeah. let the, 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 the one that does the talking do it. I don't think that they're going to listen to her. Like, they're pretty fucking pissed at her. And I think they've kind of... they. It, it seems they've already made up their mind about her. I mean, someone else might be able to get through to them, but, I, I mean, I seriously doubt she would be able to. Okay. All because I'm a tiefling. Wow. Is there one that seems to be, like, leading the entire, like, hey, let's cause a whole bunch of problems? It was the person that pointed out okay. uh, and pointed out to her, um, like it, like he did the initial accusation, but the rest of the cultists uh, seemed to be like, yeah, you know, right after. So. I, I'm going to go up to him and throw my arm around his waist, I guess, since I'm short and um, just like whisper in and be like, look, I want to find out who did this. You want to find out who did this. Let's go take a look at this body and see what we can discover. Um, make a persuasion check for me, please. Okay. Wow. Uh, he's very angry. Uh, he, his brow is furrowed, his face is red, and says, I think it was your friend, and I know you've been hanging out with her. Um, you know what? Though, so, okay, fine, let's go over there, but I'm gonna keep my eye on you. If I see you... Uh, uh, trying to interfere with any evidence. I'm going to make sure the whole encampment knows about it. Okay, so I lead him over there and explain about how the size of the hole in the back is a lot larger than, you know, the sword that Ophala carries and this, that, and the other thing. And crosses his arm and says, well, I mean, perhaps our friend was stabbed multiple times. Or perhaps the rapier was uh, was brushed uh, back and forth to the side as he was impaled. Well, how do we know you guys didn't do it? To oh, it are you here? Are you over here with with us, Crystal? Haven't I been? I mean, I guess yeah. If you fall, like, okay, who went over there? I'm assuming Ophal is not there because that would really piss them off. Yeah, yeah no, I'm I'm off doing like guard duty things. <laughs> I'm just All right, going to do guard duty where? things too. Okay, so it's Crystal and Meowthy. All right, and what did you say, Crystal? 
How do we know you didn't do it to set her up because you don't like tieflings? And he, his mouth just kind of drops to the floor. <laughs> and it says, this was our friend. How dare you? Well, how dare you accuse my friend of doing the job? His his face is like getting redder and redder. And he says, you know what? That's enough. Get out of here, both of you. And mm -hmm. uh, shoes you both away. Okay. <laughs> All right, so uh, the, over the next two days, uh, the the cultists are they're still fuming, um, <laughs> and uh, they are just they, they're like giving some serious side eye to Ofala, and uh, you hear like racist remarks uh, uttered under their breath and that sort of thing. Um, but after two days, you have finally arrived after a full sixty days of travel. Uh, to Waterdeep. Uh, Wait, we're here? Yep, let me show this to everybody. So, yep, there you are, the city of Waterdeep. Oh, Finally. it's pretty. Yep. Uh, give me one second. TV, stop it. Stop it. So, uh, so you just by living in the world and uh, hearing people talk about uh, the city as you guys were making your way up north, you know that Waterdeep is also known as uh, the City of Splendors or the Crown of the North. Um, it is one of the most important and influential cities in the north, and perhaps all of Faerun. Um, Waterdeep uh, was named for its outstanding natural deep water harbor. <laughs> Um, and the city grew up at this site, became the uh, commercial crossroads of the northern realms. Um, more than 100,000 people uh, have made their home in Waterdeep. Um, and uh, let's see. Uh, you all know that um, there is... Uh, the do 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 one second mm, I guess that's about it so that's that's about all you know uh, about Waterdeep um, as you all come in through the gates um, this is the this is the end of uh, the caravan's journey and you all will need to um, Get uh, close out your accounts. Yes, you need to get paid. You need to close out your accounts with your employers. You don't have a whole lot of time to do it because the cultists are already um, uh, kind of gearing their stuff up. They're all kind of gathering together and it looks like they're about to go deeper into the city. So um, we're going to close up your accounts. I need to go back here though and uh, we need to Find out. I can't remember how much you all were getting paid. I have to look it up. Unless you guys wrote it down. Well, okay. So Flick, you are you are hired as a bodyguard then, so you're getting ten gold per day. Mm -hmm. Um Crystal, you are hired on as a sergeant, so that was eight gold pieces. Uh, oh no. wait, it's per it's per ten day, not per day. <laughs> no, um oh, okay. Crystal was hired on as a as a guard as well. It was me who was hired as a sergeant. Thank you. All right, so Ofala was a sergeant, so you're eight gold pieces per ten day. And then um, uh, Crystal was hired on as the guard for five gold pieces per ten day. No, um, you weren't a bodyguard for the merchant. You were just a regular guard, I think. Uh, Flick. Yeah. That's five, yeah, five gold pieces per ten day. Um, well, let's see if, here. if it turns out that the um, that the closing out of the accounts takes too long and we're going to lose the cultists, I'll just skip it entirely and go follow them. <laughs> no, it's not going to take that long. It's only taken me long because I didn't have this prepped because everything broke <laughs> before the stream. Um, remind me when... So, Meowthy, when did you join the caravan? Um, it would have been about... Let's see. We had three days, six days, nine days... I think well, about that, 20 I days mean, into it. Yeah, well, do you remember what events was happening when you joined up? Like, what was the first thing you remember? The first thing I remember was the doppelgangers. 
Okay, good. All right, so we're going to say 30 days. Okay. So you're going to get paid about half of what everybody else did. And you were also a basic guard. Uh, uh, basic basic did you bitch. just call me basic? Basic, ba ba basic bitch. <laughs> Getting called basic from basic. That's, that's something. Wow. All right, hold on. Uh, so that's going to be... I need myself a pumpkin spice latte now. I was going to say, is there pumpkin spice beer or uh, mead in this universe? Oh yes, absolutely. This is this is Dagon Mars universe. Okay, there is pumpkin spice everything now. <laughs> is but unfortunately it's Sam Adams. Oh God. <laughs> All right, so Crystal, Flick, and Meowthy, you are each paid thirty gold pieces. Mm -hmm. No, scratch that. Uh, Crystal and Flick are paid 30 gold pieces. Uh, Meowthy is paid 15 gold pieces. And Ophala, you are paid 48 gold pieces. Because you got fired. Snap. He, re he, also, he, re he rehired me, so. For two days. Mm -hmm. Also, um, while you guys are paid. here, I have uh, 13 pieces, gold pieces for each of you. Because I sold a couple of gems. Okay. Great. So I also add the 13 gold pieces the shipwreck is giving you. All right. Um. So, um. You guys close out your accounts. Uh, you, uh, you know, you shake hands with your employers. Um, all of your employers uh, express their gratitude for your help and say that you know you are welcome to come back and work for them at any time. And uh, if they ever need a reference, <laughs> right? Even um, mine. <laughs> yes, especially yours. Uh, he was um, he was very grateful that you decided to come back uh, after he had fired you, and uh, he was he was. Despite how he acted in the beginning, he was uh, quite impressed with your performance and everything that you had done for everybody throughout that long two-month trip. I bet he was. <laughs> I don't Why think Ophala was performing in? those kind of services for her employer, okay? Remember, not a whore. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. So uh, the cultist caravans are not following the same patterns through the city uh as the rest of the caravan like their wagons aren't following the rest of uh, the caravan wagons um instead uh they are doing a beeline directly for the north side of the city um and they stop at an inn at the uh, edge of the north side of the city um and it looks like they are uh trying to find some accommodations you notice that the Wed w the Red Wizard of Thay that Jamna had uh, pointed out to you is still traveling with them. And um, as you guys are kind of like peering around the corner, uh, like watching the cultist movements, uh, uh, one of you, I'm not sure which one of you, but one of you looks behind you and you see Jamna standing there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Who spots her? Yeah, okay. So Crystal looks like, and Jamna's just sitting there, and she's, all, she's also kind of doing the same thing, kind of like leaning over watching them. Okay. So, um, are you, uh, do you guys want to uh, find accommodations nearby uh, to keep an eye on them, or how do you want to do this? Is there a conveniently placed inn across the street? <laughs> uh it's not directly across the street no but there is an inn that's kind of kind of catty corner to it um it's not as nice as the one that the cultists are shacked up in though uh i'm gonna ask Gemna what she thinks we should do so um Gemna says well we need to find out where that uh where that treasure is going so um i think that we should just uh uh set up shop somewhere until they're on the move again and she uh, points down the street. Um, uh, I, I know that there is another inn over here. It's not quite as nice as the one they're in, but um, I think it'd be prudent to perhaps stay in there and get a window room. 
um, so we can keep an eye on them. Uh, I think it would be reckless to stay in the same inn as, as them. That sounds like a good plan. Yeah, it's a good yeah, plan. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Shame about the quality. <laughs> uh, all right, so you go into the inn, and it is it's rowdy, it's loud, it's messy. Um... Do, do, do. But uh, it'll it's a place to sleep uh, for the night. Um, it's the price is two silver pieces per day mm. for each of you uh, if you're getting your separate accommodations. Um, and uh, their their window rooms are more expensive for one gold pieces for one gold piece. And uh, at least one of you is gonna have to have a windowed room to so that you know you guys can take turns uh, keeping watch. I think this might be one of those times where we should share a room. Just so we can all keep watch. Okay. That works. Um, Alright, so it's uh, one gold piece from the whole group. I don't know how you guys want to... Um... I'll pay for it. Okay. Great, right, so yeah, subtract the one gold piece from your inventory. And uh, so the innkeeper has uh, one of his wenches <laughs> show you up to the, your accommodations and it does have you kind of have to crane your neck a little bit but it has a pretty good view of the front of the other end so you're able to see who goes in and out and you can actually um see that the the the, uh, the wagons are are still out there but they are being guarded um uh, by what you would assume are more cultist guards uh, but they are not the same cultists that were in the caravan, interestingly. Uh, these are definitely people you don't recognize. You've not seen these people before. Are there any um, shops or stores next to their inn? Or any place I could reasonably be walking by all the time and no one would notice? Um, it looks like residences. Um, and there is a shop uh, along this, like further down the street, but it's not in eyesight of that inn. Okay. So, uh, let's see here. Um, all right, so that's pretty much it. Are you, are you guys going to be like taking turns keeping watch? Is there anything else you all want to do before uh, it gets too late and stores start to close and stuff? Go to I, the bar. I, I kind of have an idea. What? Okay. Crystal, you can shapeshift forms, right? Yeah. What if you used to transform into a regular alley cat and just have Again. a look around? Not like make put yourself in danger, but maybe see if you can get a look at the surrounding area around the inn. Yeah, I can do that. Very but it will good cost idea. You. <laughs> okay. <laughs> are you gonna tell? Are you gonna tell Ophala what it's gonna cost her? <laughs> more, more scissoring of the timbers. No, you have to demand. <laughs> you have to demand that I'm great. I mean, you have to tell me that I'm great. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you are great in your own way. No, nope, no, nope, you said it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you've been quite pivotal to the group, so you are in fact great. Okay, for you. No, oh, no, oh, see. You can't do it, Ophala. It just kills you, doesn't it? Just admit it. Hey, I, I like you. You're, you're a pretty good druid. I'll, I'll grant you that. So you are great. <laughs> For you. All right. Should I go now or later? Not like the candy. Um, so you could go now. Um, I do want to remind you all, though, that Waterdeep is a large city with a lot of commerce. So if you guys wanted to unload... Uh, any of the treasure that you have acquired I up would. to this point? Yeah, now would probably be a good time to do it. Um, so, and you could probably get good prices from here too. Oh yeah, I like have really lots good of prices. Stuff. Yeah, so um, perhaps you want to give that stuff to another uh, party member to go sell while you are investigating the inn. Okay, I'll follow. Are okay, you ready well, for this? yeah, I, I, I'm ready. Hmm. Here, I need you to pick up, we should probably pick up some potions. Not sure if we need rations, but I have some chain, I have one, I have one piece of chain mail armor, one extra longbow, and 11 gemstones. 
And two javelins. Okay. Um, here, let me bring this here. Okay. So uh, what I'm going to do, actually, is I'm going to have you, um, over, the, over the course of the rest of the session, I'm going to have you record everything that you want to sell and uh, have you send it to me, and I'll tell you how much gold you're able to get for it. Um, and we're going to do that off stream, I think. And so Ophala okay. will be off doing that, and then we're going to, uh, for the session, we're going to focus on uh, you investigating the end. Does that, okay. that sound good to everybody? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, what what is the these uh the buildings around here? Are they stone? Are they wood? Uh, mostly. Well, it's a mix. Like so, further into the core of the city, it's mostly stone, like really old city type, you know. Uh, but you're still within the walls of the city, and so there's still a lot of stone, but there are some wooden structures. So it's like a a mix. The the end that you're in, <laughs> the end that you're in. Oh God, um, is wooden. Uh, the end that the cultists are staying in is stone. Is it? Okay, so that one's stone. Um, Crystal, before you go, I'd like to take a look of my own just to make sure you're going to be safe when you head over there. I mean, sure, but I'm going to be a cat, so... I know, I know. I just want to make sure that they're not going to be able to tell that you're a cat. Wait, uh, I thought the whole point was that she was a cat. Yeah. Wouldn't it make her no, to no, where no. they should tell that she is not a cat? I want to make sure that they can't tell that she is not a cat while she is a cat when she's Crystal. Oh, <laughs> oh my god. Oh, I'm so god. confused. Wait, oh, so am I. I. Hold on, I, I need to sit down for this. All right. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll draw you a Venn diagram <laughs> later. But I would like to go over there and um, check something out first. I, I mean, as long as you're inconspicuous, I mean, that's the whole point of sending Crystal. I, I'll be completely in, inconspicuous. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So are you doing this stealthily? No, I'm not. I'm actually um, pulling out one of the charms from my mace, probably tears, putting it around my neck, and taking my alms box and setting up across the street from the end. Okay. And I'm right, going, we... going to look like I'm collecting alms for church. And in the meantime, I would like to ritually cast Detect Magic on the end. Okay, interesting. All right, go ahead. All right, so that's just a 10-minute ritual, and I can sense presence of mag magic within 30 feet of me, which I'm guessing I could sense the front part of the end. Yep. Okay, do I detect any magic? Uh, you do not detect any magic coming from the inn itself. Okay. Um, you you do detect magic coming from inside the crates uh, that the uh, that the cultists are guarding. Um, based on your experience, you imagine that it's not the crates themselves, but it's probably just like parts of the treasure. Like there are some magic items that they had caught up and that kind of thing. Uh, that's like lumped in with the treasure. Um, and you do have some faint sense of magic coming from inside the inn, but um, if you had to guess, you would say it's like probably like a magic ring or something from a patron. Jack, can I can I sense what type of oh from a patron? Okay. Uh, more importantly, yeah. did I get anything in my alms box? Good question. Uh, let me see. <coughs> I need for you to ooh. Uh, uh, I need for you... No, no, it's okay. Just making sure you're okay. <laughs> um, a ball, literally. Would you? Would you like to? Like, what kind of role would you like to do? Like religion? Role, I think it, maybe it would. Uh, it would probably be religion or performance, one or the other. Whichever, whichever one. Religion. Either one. Well, okay. You got ten copper pieces. <laughs> <laughs> you got you got you got you got a teeny tiny bit there. All right, I head right back to our, our room and explain that there are magic things inside the crates in the wagons, but there doesn't seem to be much coming from the end. Okay, and that it should be fine for Crystal proceed. Okay. All right, so Crystal. Yep. All right. So you so instead of your typical panther form. 
Um, what are you shaping it like shape shifting into? Is it like a domestic cat? And like, what does it look like? A domestic black cat looks like this. <laughs> <laughs> so it's basically like uh, you're basically your panther form, except a lot smaller. Yes. <laughs> nice. All right. Very good. All right. So, uh, so uh, d tell me how you uh, how are you going about investigating this this in? So I so I slowly dwindled down to a very small cat size, weighing about probably about eight pounds. I walk onto this little area, sniffing things, pretending to do cat things, kicking things around, you know, like a typical cat. Just trying to sniff out anything that may be. Um... So have you like walked into the front of the inn or are you like in the alleyway or what's going on? I'm in the alleyway. Starting okay. off. All right. Um, there's all sorts of interesting sights and smells, right? Uh, mostly urine. Um... <laughs> <laughs> uh but you don't really see anything amiss other than the uh the caravan wagons being guarded by those uh angry looking gentlemen. And am I able to go further just to make sure? There's actually uh you like when you look around you can actually see a pathway that like a small cat might be able to use to jump up and uh get a peek into the windows of the inn from the building adjacent to it oh i'm definitely going to use that i'm going to stretch my okay. legs do a hop um can you as your uh actually yeah can you do like um let's do an acrobatics check or uh, in your, if you want to do your cat form, oh my. We've not done acrobatics in a long time. <laughs> yeah, so... Um, Cats always land on their feet. <laughs> yeah, well, so this is a critical fail, right? So, so this is, like, you try, but you fail spectacularly. So, so describe this to me. Like, like, how did you mess up so badly? Okay, well, I went to hop into a little hole... Then I kind of miscalculated the distance because I got distracted by a fly in the air and I kind of just tumbled down a bit because I went for the fly in the hole at the same time and they were in opposite directions. So, yeah. <laughs> All right. So you tumble down and you accidentally <laughs> land like right on top of the cult, uh, cultist wagons. Um, and like one of the guards turns around and like he sees this, this stray cat like just perched on top of the the tarp over the wagon and he's like starts swatting at you with his hand like get out of here you mangy cat i angry meow meow <laughs> you like know, probably like hit meow and hiss right <laughs> yes. nice all right uh so do another acrobatics check for me if you want to try to get up there again mm. come on <laughs> i'm gonna give it to you but it's super clumsy like you are like scraping at the wall and like, i'm still a little flustered from the last fall <laughs> <laughs> yeah you're making tons of ruckus but and actually the guards are now watching you but like you're you're obviously just a cat i think they're just watching out of amusement um but they <laughs> you they're watching you but they you do actually get up to the roof of this building that's adjacent to it and you actually have a pretty good view uh into uh the rooms on this side of the building um can you make a perception check for me please Sure. That's better. <laughs> okay. Um, you do see in two of the rooms people that you recognize. Um, in one of the rooms, uh, two of the cultists are getting busy, and you are getting an eyeful of all that nonsense. Um, and in the other room, um, two of the cultists uh, who are sharing that room are just kind of sitting at a small table. Um, and they they have drinks in their hands. I guess they've are, they've are, taken their are they up are the they tavern. trying to ignore the sounds of two cultists getting in getting busy they, in the other room? It's hard to say. They don't seem to be acknowledging it. I, I was about and, to make the same comment. <laughs> <laughs> they don't seem to be acknowledging it. No. <laughs> uh, so uh, ship, what do you want to do from here? Is there anywhere else I could walk in just to see if there's anything else I can look for? I want to make sure I get into every little nook and mm -hmm. cranny. Um, you could probably get closer to the windows. Uh, you could probably leap across and get closer to the windows. There is a ledge you could land on. Um, 
you may or may not be able to hear anything happening uh, that way. You could also potentially try to sneak through the tavern up into the, the room area on the second floor, and uh, you could probably have a better chance of hearing what's happening in those rooms, but uh, you also have a chance of being caught uh, trying to sneak through the tavern. Well, it's nighttime, right? It is nighttime, yes. And I'm a black cat, so I'm guessing, you know, this is the land of no lights. So I feel like it's easier to not be detected as a cat. Well, not inside of a, a tavern. There's, like, candles and a fireplace, and it's pretty well lit inside. Uh, on the outside, though, they probably wouldn't be able to see you. All right, let's do from the outside. Do I need to do... Yeah, do one more acrobatics check for me, please. And here I leap. Here's my leap of faith. Oh, thank God. Okay. All right, so you actually do make it across, uh, and you land gracefully without making any sounds or anything. Um, I need for you to do a perception check for me, please. Uh. Oh, you land you gracefully, hear... but you're not quite sure where. <laughs> You hear something uh, like a muffled conversation uh, coming from the room with the people at the table. Uh, it, you can't make out what they're saying, though. But my God, those two that are getting it on in the other room are making quite a ruckus. <laughs> like, they do not care who cares, the, who hears. <laughs> so, what do you want to do now? I kind of just want to, like, walk around the... Per permitters one more time just to see if I can hear. Mm, no, you don't hear anything. You know, and you don't see anybody else that you recognize in the other rooms. And some of the rooms are dark; you can't really see. Right. Is there any items there. near the window by the people having sex? Any items like what are you looking for? Anything that can be knocked off and make a loud noise. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, they're knocking no. stuff off. For, all right, all right. So. <laughs> <laughs> There's oh a massive dildo by the window that you could knock off. <laughs> it's it's one of those one stuck of those on dildos ass, on the windows. No, it's one of those creepy ass <laughs> dragon dildos. Oh, yes. fantasy fantasy dildos dot com. No bad mm -hmm. dragon. I, mean, I wasn't aware that that was the URL, but thanks for the name drop. <laughs> <laughs> Someone has a sponsorship. <laughs> Haunt me, but. Um, <laughs> So yeah, I guess since I, I can't really hear, I just, I kind of just scamper out. Do I pass by anyone at all? Um, I mean, there there's people out in the street, uh, but the only people in the alley were the guards watching over the, the caravan wagons, and there's nobody else outside here with you. Can I go up to one of the guards and dry heave on them? Okay. Uh, yes, you can, and yes, you do. Uh, can you make a dexterity saving throw for me, please? Cat's about to get kicked. <laughs> no, I'm not. So, so the guard, uh, <laughs> like, like pulls his leg back and is like, he's gonna go in for a swing and try to punt you across the street. <laughs> but he actually slips. Uh, the road is kind of slippery, and he falls back and bangs his head really hard on the the wagon and like knocks himself out and uh his friend next to him is like holy shit and like kind of bends down to try to <laughs> end to his friend um and so yeah that's that's what happens all right see, now see, i need a cat chattering thing and i run off for real this time this this is why you don't mess with black cats they're just full of like bad luck <laughs> <laughs> yep yep exactly all right um are you heading back to the to the end yeah, room? Yeah, we're gonna go back to the room and tell them what I did see, despite not being able to hear. Okay. On your way back to the end room, you notice uh Gemna going into uh the end room right next to your alls. Um you're still on cat form and she doesn't seem to she like sees you and she sees that there's a cat in here, but she just kinda shrugs her shoulders. She suppose it's not unusual for a shabby and like this to have cats in it. And uh, she closes the door behind her. Um can I actually so, listen at her door? Yeah. Um, so you listen and you don't hear anything. It's uh, complete and utter silence. Eerily silent, even. 
Well, now I go back to the room. All right. And I come and... back into my elf form. I shed off the extra fur that was just laying in my hair. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So I saw two people having a conversation that I couldn't quite make out. And, and, that, and that's all she saw. Well, <laughs> he, I also saw two cultists going at it, but I really want to erase that from my memory. <laughs> oh my. Going, going at what? Oh, Flick. We'll, we'll tell you when you're a little bit older, Flick. Yeah, yeah Flick. <laughs> Flick is so pure. <laughs> so they were kind of being a little ra- loud for me to really hear what was going on. I did get to dry heave them on the guards and watch them slip. And right before I came back, our little, our tiny little buddy next door, I tried to listen in on her door, and it was just pure awkward. Tiny little time. buddy next door. What tiny little buddy next door? God, I'm bad with me. And then, and then you hear uh, from the next room, "My name's Jamna." <laughs> 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 oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, there's that. I'll I'll knock on the wall. <laughs> Who is it? <laughs> <laughs> so, um yeah, that's uh I think that's pretty much it for the evening. Is there anything else anybody would like to do? Watch for evil. Right. So you all take turns uh, watching the, the caravan wagons. Uh, there's no movement on them. Um, there, the few guards do rotate their shifts, just as you all are also rotating watch as you guys are trying to get your rest. Um, let's see. Do do do. In the morning, uh, you guys don't even have time to eat breakfast because the wagons are on the move. And I believe it is uh, Meowthy that was that is uh, keeping watch uh, when the wagons start to move. So what do you do? Uh, run around the room, say, "Hey, wake up, wake up, wake up!" and bang on the wall, and say, "Wake up!" <laughs> um, all right, very good. So as you all are leaving the the end room, um, you see a very tired looking Jamna also leave her room, and she's like, "Well, here we go." Here we go, indeed. Um, all right. Is anybody so, in the common room, like, eating breakfast? Yes, there are other uh, patrons to the inn, and they are, they're, like, you know, they're having their morning gruel, whatever the fuck this inn is, is serving. It's, like, lumpy something or other. Like a gray goop. <laughs> oh. I grab a bowl as I run by and toss two silver on the table. The guy that was eating it was like, hey! And then looks at the two silver. He's like, ooh. <laughs> um, all right, very good. So um, the, the cultists actually take the wagons um, out the northern gate. This is actually very nearby. And um, there is another caravan forming out here. Um, it looks, there's a lot of people milling about. Um, you see a lot of wagons with things like, uh, construction supplies. There's, like, a lot of wood and stone and, uh, things to make, uh, like, mortar, um, on these wagons. And there's a, there's quite a lot of them. Um, what do you all do? Crap. We should have seen if there was someone we could check in with. We should we should see if we can like maybe talk away onto the caravan following it with the construction materials. Okay, so you want to approach like one of the other um, like supply wagon types and like talk to the people tending them, or what do you guys think? Hmm. I think before we approach, we should try to change our costumes again. Um, I don't know if you're going to have time to do that. What if all of us suddenly has a Fu Manchu? <laughs> <laughs> like, all of even the girls. Oh my god. <laughs> Not suspicious at all. 
All right, my cat is making it very difficult for me to switch tabs because she's covering them. Mm -hmm. I approach one of the uh, workmen, see who's in charge, and see if we can get a job. Okay, great. So um, when you when you're discussing with it, they're they're all very welcoming people. They're like, yeah, of course, yeah. Um, we're not really looking to hire anyone, but if you want to travel with us, that's that's fine. Um, he tells you that all of these supplies uh, are going up to the uh, toward, closer towards the city of uh, Neverwinter. Um, apparently, uh, and you you all have heard rumors of this. Uh, Neverwinter was almost uh, completely destroyed um in uh, a cataclysm um not too long ago and uh lord um lord never ember uh who presides over the city of neverwinter has been um dipping into his own pockets uh for rebuilding efforts trying to get neverwinter back up on its feet um and so a lot of these construction materials are heading up the road and um that's uh, that's pretty much it um, so you guys are going to be traveling with, with, uh, these folks. Uh, they're not going to provide you any food because you're not working for them, but you all have your rations still, um, which are somehow still good. Like, I don't know what the hell, what kind of preservatives they are, they're putting in these rations, but goddamn, it's been like it two months. It is and... <laughs> super, super salty. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, does there need to be a rational explanation behind it? Oh, Jesus Christ. I'm going to fly <laughs> over there and believe. smack you. <laughs> Oh my God! All right, Ophala, that's enough. That's enough out of you. <laughs> that was good, though. That was funny. All right. <clears throat> so, on the road once again, northbound once again. Luckily, this time you all aren't going to be traveling nearly as far, and uh, this is going to be a far less eventful um, uh, trip. Let's see. Um, the cultists notice you traveling with a caravan, and they are not happy to see you again. Uh, you guys are, have been the target of dirty looks uh, for the past several days. Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. Well, why do I feel like I'm about to get another dash of racism? <laughs> <laughs> Just a dash? <laughs> well, you know. Let's see. Just the tip. I mean, that's just disappointing. <laughs> Depends on the size of the tip. Equally true. Channing Tatum sized. You know what? We're supposed <laughs> to bring that back up again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So, um, <clears throat> seven days into the trip, uh, the convoy. Um, uh, camps up on the hilltop of this area, and you actually have a, a a pretty good sight of this area called the Mirror of Dead Men. Um, Ooh, there's like a chill, promising. yes. There's like a chill tangle uh, of trees and brush and boggy ground and standing water and reeds and like mosquitoes. Um, it's a super lovely place. <clears throat> Crystal should also, feel my of, at home. Mm hmm. <laughs> Um, and, uh, Flick, you know that, you know, um, uh, probably a thought crosses your mind that, you know, this is, this would be excellent territory for a black dragon. Um, but it's just like a, probably a passing thought, I would imagine. Uh, let's see. Very fleeting. I'm not even going to tell the party. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the rest of the trip is actually within sight of the mirror. Um, you all reach a, uh, a destination. On the 10th day of the trip, you find yourselves at a roadhouse that the people in the convoy are car calling uh, Karnath Roadhouse. So, I need to bring all the Roadhouse. Okay. Roadhouse. <laughs> all right. All right, family yeah, guy. Do it. Um, so, here's how this is going to work. Um, let me just read this off real quick. So, um... Your destination uh, for now is the Carnath Road House. Um, the the cultist uh, wagons are stopping here, as are most of the other um, supplies. Everyone is kind of uh, unloading supplies in this area. Um, there's a lot of people milling about. Um, there's someone barking orders. 
Um, so uh, it's a compound that served as a, a hostelry um, on the trade route between Waterdeep and Neverwinter uh, in the days when trade actually flourished before Neverwinter was uh, almost completely destroyed. Um, it fell into disuse when trade stopped, uh, but now that the road is being rebuilt, the roadhouse has been repaired, um, and it's being put to use as a supply depot and wagon park. Um, so, uh, let's see here. Um, I'm, here's how this is going to work. You guys pretty much have free reign of the map. The only thing I ask is that uh, before you... Uh, like when you come up to a door and the door is uh, like you can tell by the red that it's a door um, and you won't be able to see past it with your 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 vision and stuff um, uh, just ask me if it's locked or unlocked or whatever and if you can go inside uh, and then I'll, I'll let you know um, also you'll notice that Jamna is traveling with you yay yep um, and so she's going to be coming along for the ride um, can we pump her <laughs> May. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Twinsies. <laughs> um, you may not punt her. I mean, you could try, but it bad things would probably happen. So, um, <laughs> let's see here. Uh, so basically, uh, you guys can do whatever you want. Uh, if you see somebody, you can go up and, Orgy. and talk to them. Um, I mean, you may be in the privacy of your own room. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. What's a big public orgy between friends? <laughs> it's just what a friendly say? orgy. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, so, uh, what are you doing? Uh, I'll go to the store here, I guess. Okay, so um, the door is actually already open. You all can walk through there. You did see the uh, the caravan. Um, you just go directly past, like the square directly past the door, and it'll unveil. Yeah. Um, and the rest of you can follow him. Uh, is that, is that a dog? No. Uh huh. So um, you, the, the cultist wagons did come in here along with a lot of the other construction materials. And um, they, they started unloading the boxes and taking them back here. Mm -hmm. um, there is a guard standing, uh, guard standing uh, over duty there. Um, and this guy is over here having a conversation with him. Um, Crystal and Flick, you have no idea what I'm talking about because you're still standing outside and probably can't see what's happening. Uh, the the roll twenty things being stupid. I just reloaded the site. Oh, okay. Is the guard over there? Over here? Is he um someone that was in our original caravan? Uh, no, no, he was not. If I look around this room, do I see anybody that was in our original caravan? Uh, no, you do not. In fact, the the cultists, um, uh, the the cultists that you were traveling with beforehand and afterwards, uh, they're they're you saw them come inside, but you don't see them in this room. Okay. So, can I see what's up here from down here? Uh, sure. I mean, unless somebody stops you, you can go pretty much wherever you want. Um, so if you go to those stairs. Um, I will put you in the proper location. So you walk up the stairs, and then you end up there. Um, let me zoom out, because now that's going to need to... Yeah, I need to find this. myself. <laughs> Don't we all? So you, you're further over to the left. Sorry, the, yeah, the right. Yeah. <laughs> the other left. You hang a bit to the left. <laughs> Ideally. From an so, hour. one of the guards actually comes up to you, uh, Ofala, and says, uh, can I help you? Oh, I'm, I'm just uh, looking around to see if there's any free rooms available. 
Uh, he says, oh, right. So uh, you want to go talk to Bog Luck uh, down on the first floor. Uh, he, he, I saw him. He was uh, helping un unload a lot of the, uh, the crates and stuff. But he's the one that's in charge of this place. And if you need a room, uh, that's who you need to talk to. Do you know if any of these are free up here? Because these look re these kind of look like cool little rooms. Uh, yeah, some of them are free. Do you have one of these rooms? <laughs> he squints at that you. Sounds like a proposition. <laughs> he, he squints at you and says, um, maybe, would you like to come check it out? Sure. Bounce. <laughs> he he, he kind of grins, right? And he says, okay, follow me, it's this way, and he starts uh, coming over here, over this direction, and he stops in front of uh, this door here, and uh, he walks in, and invites you to come in as well. So just the square directly north. Yep. Oh, wow, I was right. These uh, rooms are quite nice and spacious. <laughs> I'll be leaving now. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he has like a shocked look on his face and also kind of like a super dejected look and his, his shoulders kind of slump and he's like, okay. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> so, I'll, go, uh, I'll go back down. Then. This is probably right. where we're going to get killed by the cultists now. Not because we thwarted their plans, but because you didn't put out. I mean, I'm not a whole... <laughs> I hope there are spiders in here. No, whores get paid. I mean, oh. in all of Ophala's time during this, she's not slept with anyone. So, Ophala, uh, Jamna comes up to you and says, um, I honestly can't tell if we're in enemy territory or not. Um, why don't we all get rooms and uh, we'll kind of get settled in and we'll scout out the area and see what we can find out. That sounds like a good idea. The rooms seem pretty spacious. I just had a look inside one of them. Right. And so in each room, there are uh, like bunk bed type situations, uh, two bunk beds for each room. So each room can sleep four people. I mean, we can all share one room and you can just like bunk with the dwarf. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Make them equal one person. Exactly. Makes sense. Okay, so, oh, mm -hmm. uh, Flick, are we, were you able to get Roll20 working again? Nope. I just What's see a on? black space, and I just see my token, and that is it. Uh, okay, that's my bad. Hold on, let me fix it. Let me get you fixed. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Can't have Do I have to wear the cone the after this? <laughs> that yeah. Yeah, that is totally my bad. I'm sorry about that. Let a dragon uh, bone with the cone. That would be quite an amusing sight. <laughs> There you go. You see oh. the doors to your cell? Uh, yes. The red things? Yeah, yeah. you can walk through those. Oh, cool. You got the lighting to work. Yeah, sorry about that. I, I think I'm using one of your older tokens that wasn't completely set up. I see a heart. Somebody's drawing again. <laughs> oh my god. Not me this time. Wait, it's never been me. What am I talking about? <laughs> um, what does it look like these, these doors are to the north here? Um, you've actually seen people leading, uh, horses into there, so okay. those are most likely stables. Okay. And how about um, the, the west? Same thing? Yep, same thing. Okay. You hear neighing and kicking. I wonder if Nay. we could transform into a horse and be one of the horses for the, the Dragon Cult caravan. I wonder well, if here's the thing. I only oh, get... shoot. You know what? My bad. Actually, that was. Those are not the stables. Oh. <laughs> those are my mistake. Those are actually oh rooms. Uh, the, there are people going through there, not horses. They they're really ugly people. A lot of people that look like Sarah <laughs> they, Jessica Parker. Oh they my god! I saw, wow. I, I saw it. Coming. <laughs> I saw Sarah Jessica Parker line coming. Yeah. Right. Do so, I, do uh, I still hear you Yeah, you do hear name coming oh, okay. from the south. Oh. I, I meant those rooms. Nope. Okay. <laughs> it was echoing through the building. It was, it was hard to tell where they were coming from. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll uh, get some rooms from... Is it Bog? Bog yeah. Luck. So, uh, let's see here. 
Do 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 do. Where where are the so, cultists still loading again? Just out of curiosity. Um, they are, uh, you see the guard that Bogluck is standing next to? Oh, so it, it's here. It's in the door, not the, not the, not the, yeah, that door, yep. Ah, okay. Yeah, not the stairs, but the door. The stairs goes up, upstairs. <laughs> the, it's being unloaded on the same floor, they're not carrying it upstairs. Um, all right, so give me one second. So, uh, Bogluck is a half orc, uh, pretty handsome for a half orc, uh, but uh, big and strong. He's uh, very stern. He um, he's barking out orders to people as they everybody's getting unloaded and things are getting organized. Um, yeah, and so right now he's just kind of standing, standing off to the side there. Um. I walk up to him and I request a room. Uh, he looks you up and down and says, uh, all right, fair enough. Uh, one room is going to be one gold piece and it sleeps up to four people. That, that's completely fine. Uh, I'll, how about we make it two gold? No questions asked. He squints at you. He says, are you on the run from somebody? Uh, no, no, no. We, I just like my privacy, that's all. Mm-hmm. That would be a cool uh, even though even though he totally asked a question, he does take the two gold pieces from you. <laughs> but he seems to be suspicious of you now. Um, and you uh, have a room upstairs. Um, he describes it, and I will show it to you whenever you all want to retire to your rooms. I'm, I'm, I suppose I'll go tell everybody else that we have a room. Okay. Mm um, I, I gesture me offer to come over to me and uh, Jem. All right. So um, the rooms sleep up to four people. The the like bunk beds. Would you two mind like bunking together? Did we lose somebody? Super quiet. No, I'm. No, I'm, we're I'm all just here. Just thinking that over. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, uh, well, I suppose one of us has to be awake all the time anyway, so there'll always be a bed. It'll just be a hot bed. Oh, my God. What? Fair enough. It, it's a legitimate term, hot bedding. It's when you like when you work in a hospital. So what's our next plan of action? Should we try to look around the inn, although we might end up looking more suspicious? Or we can always just say we thought this was our room. I mean, I this suppose that could work for you note. guys. <laughs> okay. Uh, so have we checked out the other rooms in here? Like, I've I, I've been upstairs. Oh, sorry, that's about it. Anybody go to this? These two on, on the left? Nope. Nope, and none of those rooms uh, appear to be locked, except for the uh, one to the very south of where you're at. On the south wall, or the very south one here? So this, uh, let me, so that one is locked. Okay. All the rest of them are unlocked. Um, including, including your rooms. So your rooms are actually going to be upstairs, by the way. Okay. So, like, uh, what's over just... here? Um, so, Ophala, uh, you hear the neighing and stuff coming through there. The door's unlocked if you want to investigate. Um, I think I heard Mialfi ask something. Uh, yeah, uh, can I just casually lean up against the door and crack it open and peek inside? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. So, uh, when you peek inside, you see uh, two bunk beds. Um, well, you can go ahead and go in there. There's hay scattered about on the floor, like this used to be used for, uh, like, horses or something, but now it's used for people. Nay. Nay. <laughs> hey, <laughs> now, come the, on. Hen <laughs> hence the DM's confusion earlier. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, these, uh, these are clearly the sleeping quarters of anybody that is, like, working or staying here at the roadhouse. Okay. 
So are these people or are these like standing tokens for horses? Those, uh, those are no, those are not horses. Those are not Sarah Jessica Parkers. <laughs> those are <laughs> those are stable boys at the very south there that you're seeing, Ophala. Mm, stable boys. Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. Run, bro. <laughs> Far into all, it looks like. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. Yep. I, I'm going. I'm going to approach one of them and ask them if they see a lot of people coming through here, and if anything suspicious goes on. So, so one of them, uh, actually the youngest of them, kind of looks up at you with like very innocent eyes. Um, he uh, he he seems to be pretty quick witted. Um, and and sorry, what was it that you asked him? If they get a lot of travel here, and if they've seen anything suspicious over the last couple of weeks. So he thinks, and he says, um... You know what, miss? Yes. Actually. Um, we've been getting a lot more foot traffic than than usual. Um, and, uh, you know, several months ago... Mr. Mr. Bog Luck actually locked up um, uh, one of the rooms um, here, and don't you think it's kind of strange? Like, why would why would construction materials need to be locked up? And you know, it's in the it's in the it's past the warehouse. This locked room, and they they take every, they take all the crates and stuff that they unload into the warehouse. And so I can't imagine what else they'd be storing in there other than, you know, what they're bringing in. That is strange. I, I thank you for the information. I'll give you two gold for that. <laughs> he, his mouth kind of drops. He's like, wow, two gold. That's like, more this than is the, the this is shit's the... made in a year. <laughs> <laughs> this is this more than he's ever seen in his entire life. Like, he could never even fathom having two gold pieces. And the I other stable boys... I can relate to that NPC. <laughs> the other stable boys uh, kind of look over at him with like resentment and jealousy now. Somebody's getting mugged in the night. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's what resentment uh, and jealousy does to people, right? It gets them to mug somebody or kill them or something. Man, that poor little oh kid's God, about to be like shanked for his two gold. <laughs> I know. And this is how America was formed. <laughs> <laughs> I I'll uh, bid him goodbye and I'll come out. Okay. Um I think uh okay, yeah, we can keep going for a little bit longer, I think. So, uh I'm I guess I'll go up these stairs. Don't trip. Okay. Don't pull all the fear. All right. So, uh you go up the stairs and you end up here. All right, I'll go up these stairs if I'm allowed. Yep, so you go up those stairs, and you end up uh, here in uh, some eating quarters. Um, oh, there's there's some uh, guards at the table, and you see a, another guard uh, over here. He's not actually a guard, though. He's uh, He seems to be a cook of some kind. Um, but so cook. Yeah, he's just the cook. So the, guy, the guys are kind of sitting around the tables, uh, chit-chatting with each other, and the, the other guy over to the right is uh, cooking up a meal for everybody. Does it look like there's, like, alcohol for sale? Oh, yeah. All right. How many people are in this room? One, two, three, four? Yep, four, including the, the cook himself. And you, would, well, five, including you. I would like five alcohols, please. <laughs> Five alcohols, all right. Five he alcohols. looks up at you, he's like, mm, honeymead or honeymead works. Well okay. then, wait, if it's honeymead, I'm gonna need six. <laughs> all right. So uh you buy six of them, that's gonna be six silver pieces. Sweet. That's cheap. All right, yeah. uh and I just walk around passing them out to everybody, thanking them for taking such good care of us. I, I uh, they're like they kind of cheer and like you know like you you are suddenly very much in these guys' good graces. <laughs> so can I the... like? Hmm? Sorry, go on. Nope. Yo, go ahead. No, no, no. Oh, you know what? Oh, you know what? I just realized chat can't see what you see. No. 
Okay, right. well, the, the now ship can see. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we'll just have to do that. I'm going to, um, I'll fix it here. I'll have to remember to fix that. But anyway, um, uh, Flick, what are you doing? Uh, you said that there was, well, actually, I wouldn't know that. Never mind. Yep. Uh, I guess I'll go see what everyone else is doing on the set on this floor. Down, uh, this way. Yep. So that brings you up. There. Yeah, Ophala, what just happened? Ophala is somewhere else, right? Um, yeah. yeah. That's where, if you go up the stairs, that's where you are. Yeah, Ophala is downstairs still, I think. No, she's upstairs, but she's in the hallway where the rooms are. Oh, that was a hell of a teleport. Well, it's two floors. So you're on the second floor. So can I, like, like listen in on these doors to see if I hear anything? Mm -hmm. uh, you hear chattering, but it's mostly about uh, construction and uh, the road north to Neverwinter and things of that nature. And and that's for all of them. There's nothing really in particular. I mean, yeah. I mean, as you go through the hall, like nothing is really jumping out at you as far as conversations happening inside of them. There are people in some of these rooms, and they are having conversations, but um, it's uh, you know nothing's really jumping out at you right now. Um, can I go join the others then? Uh, sure. Yep. So, um, and Jam is kind of off doing her own little thing here. And um, I think some some time passes, uh, unless you guys wanted to talk to anybody else. Yeah, right? I'd, I'd like to ask um, the cook uh, how long he's been working here. Okay, um, so the cook uh, introduces himself as uh, uh, Gristle Pete. Um, he says that he's been working here for... Uh... <laughs> Gristle Pete? Gristle Pete! Yes, yes. <laughs> That's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> and um he's he's kind of he's on the grumpy side okay. uh but he's been working here for about nine months he says and um yeah that's that's pretty much it okay you know um as you all are all in here the the cook um, as he's tending to the meal I, I, i'm not in the well I, I you said you... you were coming you said you were gonna join them yeah i thought you'd have moved me but no, you can. You know where it is now, so you can go over there. Right? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. You can't see them. Okay. All right. So, uh, let's see. So, uh, as he's wow, you guys are like all up in the cook's business. Um, he's he's going about uh, you know, shit? prepping for meals, and he's like kind of muttering to himself, and um, he says something along the lines of uh, oh, God damn. Don't get no sleep from all the critters in the floors banging and knocking and hissing and whispering at all hours. Hmm. Sounds like they're doing the same thing they were doing back at the end. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like what I saw the cultists doing. Not that's what he's that's what he's talking about. Oh, he said at the inn. Oh now I get it. Yeah. Never mind. <laughs> Hush. Um I walk up to him and say, is there something bothering you? Uh, he looks over at you and he says, oh, I'm sorry. It's just I haven't been getting much sleep. Uh, it seems like every once in a while when I'm trying to sleep, um, downstairs I keep I keep hearing uh, uh, I keep hearing like bumping and and uh like hissing and all sorts of stuff those those rats must be huge and they're really annoying and keep me up at night and he points over to the corner of the room over here where he has like a bed roll so this guy like lives and works in the same room i cannot be on it so um that sounds yeah that we need to we need to call health services <laughs> DVD, I, um, health services I, I am completely <laughs> against ever calling hall services. I, I I look and and I say, would you like us to maybe investigate? Well, uh, he says, well, investigate if you will. I mean, it only happens every few days, and 
And then he like kind of trails off. He like kind of looks up like into nothing. <laughs> and then like he kind of tilts his head to the side. And he says, uh, you know, now that I think about it, it seems to happen every time a new load gets dropped off. Isn't that some oddball rat behavior? Yeah, what an uh, interesting coincidence. Sounds like loads are being dropped off down there. <laughs> That's some heavy loads. <laughs> oh, my oh my god. All right, guys, I think that's going to... Uh, we're going to end it here. How about well, we can pick this up next we, week? We, we end with the loads, huh? We, end, we always end with the loads. Heavy the loads? Load so heavy, we had to go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> we need more stamina, yeah. guys. <laughs> Talk about All right, yourselves. guys. Yeah, all right. Um, we're going we're gonna to go down the list here. Uh, I want you all to uh, just uh, tell me, you know, sit... Just tell me, tell everybody where they can find you and uh, what you do and all that stuff. So, uh, Shipwreck, we will start with you. You did that just as I coughed. Perfect timing. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, like, what, like our Twitter? So, like, your Twitter, yeah, your Twitter and Twitch, whatever. Where, where can people find you if you want to be found? I know some of you aren't streamers and probably <laughs> don't want to let everybody know <laughs> where they can find you. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, I'm Shipwreck Shark. I also stream, and all of my handles are literally Shipwreck Shark. So it's probably the easiest thing to follow. All right, very nice. Thank you, Shipwreck. All right, May May, where can we find you? Well, uh, you can find me under Dagon's bed. Um, no, joke aside, you can find me. I don't uh, think that's going to happen because ghosts <laughs> will eat you. <laughs> he might. <laughs> no, you can find me um, on Twitch under the same username, Messiah. So. Okay. And uh, I imagine Twitter as well, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, Azuba, you're not a streamer, so I don't know if you want people finding you. I mean, I have a really bad Twitch account. Um, I've streamed like maybe three times. I didn't uh, even know that. Yeah, I, I I streamed like some Destiny or some shit like that, or some indie game that I found. I just turn it on and I don't bother looking at chat. So if I'm on, you're <laughs> you're you're gonna be talking to the wind. Um, it's a uh, Goku X Yolo swag. Super easy for people to find, Jesus and I Christ. love that. That's just the best thing ever. Goku X Solo swag, seriously? Are you trying Yes. <laughs> no, not I'm not. Uh, it's I'm it's legit. His, it's, it's legit. It's, his. It is, it is, it's just like, what do I need to add to it? And I'm like, well, I, I, I have the swag, but I need to introduce the YOLO. And it, it was just, and you have to have X in there because, I mean, it's the internet. <laughs> X's I are thought, everywhere. I thought about putting 1999 in there too. Just to, <laughs> that would have been the icing on the cake. <laughs> just, just, yeah. Uh, All right, I'm, very I'm, good. I'm also found as a Zuba on PSN and Xbox, so not that hard to find me. Yeah. I'll yeah. find you on All right. PSN. All right, uh, Total Fusion One. Where can we find you? Uh, I'm not currently streaming quite yet. I have a D&D group that will be starting up uh, Sunday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern, and you can find me at Total Fusion One. That's the number one on Twitch. Fantastic. Wait, I just have one question. What does the patch say in Fusion's hat? It's been bothering me the whole uh, entire thing. It's my all-time favorite team. Oh, it's backwards. Oh, okay. I see it. Tampa Bay, Tampa Bay Lightning. Hell Hockey, yeah. nice. Oh, yeah, we're going to a game. Uh, Azuba and I are going to a game on the 27th. Oh, fun. They're going to be playing uh, where we live for where they never play up here. So, Oh, well, that's fun. That's Very generic cool. enough. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to call you. I got no problem people knowing where I live, but I, I, I know you've done some stuff in your past you don't want people to know about. So, <laughs> I, I was acquitted. That's oh, wait, whoa, Very whoa. True. This guy. No. All right. That's a story for another day. All right. Uh, thank you, everybody, for, for joining me for the game. I really appreciate you all being here. Thank you so much, Shipwreck and May and Azuba and Total Fusion 1. Uh, you all are fantastic. Um, I think we are going to end it here. Uh, have a good night, everybody. Bye-bye. All right. Bye. Enjoy the movie. Bye. Bye. That's all for this week. Hopefully, no more caravans. 
If you like what you saw, hit those like and subscribe buttons. We record live on twitch.tv slash Dagenmar on Sundays at 3 p.m. Eastern Time or 1 p.m. Eastern Time on the last Sunday of every month for a long session. Link is in the description. The adventurers are in over their heads without even realizing it. Let's see what happens next time.